This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this video is about a small desmond membrane detachment which uh, was encountered at the region of the side port and let's see how we could manage this case. Uh, she is an 80 year old lady who is posted for toric intraocular lens and uh, these are her biometric findings. We can note that uh, the, we're dealing with a hypermetropic eye, the eye is smaller and uh, let's see how things turn out. Rexus is being done. And I'm using a plunge chopper to confirm the nucleus rotation. This point, I really can't make out at what stage the desmond membrane detachment actually happens. And I'll, as we proceed with the surgery, I'll just show you when I first noticed it. As I begin the nucleus management, the initial epinucleus is being aspirated now. At this stage, I'm still not able to notice any of the desmond membrane detachment at the side port. So the nucleus division process is being done in the routine fashion. It's not a dense nucleus. It's divided easily into smaller fragment using the vertical chop technique. As the nucleus gets emulsified and I can get this red glow, now is the time I can really see a small triangular flap which is fluttering. This is the moment in which I actually notice it first. Since it's small, I don't expect it to enlarge uh, anywhere. I'm just using the BSS to flush the posterior capsule with one eye closely on the area where the desmond membrane is torn. I put in OVD now just to provide some tamponade as the bimanual I and A cannulas are being introduced into the eye. The I and A cannulas are switched to remove the cortex from the opposite end. And as soon as the irrigation cannula enters through this side port, we can see that the tone desmond membrane is fluttering in full glory. As I'm aspirating the cortex under this fluttering desmond membrane flap, I'm conscious that I don't want to engage this flap into the aspiration port. Well, even if you remove this small part of desmond membrane as well, I don't think you're going to get into any serious problem. But I'm sure this could be reattached using an air bubble. So I'm just trying to avoid this area. Hydro implantation of the toric intraocular lens is being done now. The irrigation cannula is being held with my non-dominant hand as the intraocular lens is being implanted into the capsule bag. The cannula will be held above the level of the cartridge so that the haptics and the optic of the unfolding lens don't jump up. So it irrigating cannula is in fact used as a guide to nudge the intraocular lens into the capsule bag. Although no OVD has been placed into the bag, there will always be some OVD which is going to be sticking onto the undersurface of the lens uh, which we have used in the cartridge. So it's mandatory for us to go ahead and irrigate out uh, some of the OVD which could be sticking onto the undersurface of this uh, lens. So as it is being done, I can still see the fluttering uh, desmond's membrane here. For toric intraocular lens, it's important that the undersurface of the lens and the capsule bag is totally devoid of any OVD. This ensures a strong adhesion of the lens with the posterior capsule. It ensures better rotational stability. Once the OVD both in front and behind the lens is totally cleared off, uh, side ports are hydrated and the main incision is also hydrated. This is the step which I do before doing the final alignment. The lens is aligned into the desired axis. and the side ports are being hydrated. Let me give you the orientation here. I'm sitting on the temporal side and the desmond membrane detachment is in the superior quadrant. And this is very easy detachment to fix because once you put the air bubble, it goes into the superior quadrant and stays there most often than not. And that gives enough tamponade for a quick reattachment of this desmond membrane. So an inferior detachments are always going to be much more difficult to manage compared to this one. Of course, this is a very tiny one, but still it's much more easy to manage them. For hydration of all the wounds, I'm going to put in an air bubble which is going to provide the necessary tamponade for this small desmond membrane detachment. 
These are the first day pictures. Air bubble is giving nice support to the area where the DM detachment had happened. And these are the OCT pictures. And this is the picture at the 10th day. The patient is doing fine. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.